If you own a film camera that was made from the 1980s and earlier, such as this Olympus OM2 SP, oftentimes you will notice that these cameras do not have any form of autofocus assistance built in. All the focusing has to be done completely manually by the photographer. But the fortunate thing about using these cameras is that these cameras usually include some form of focusing assistance that's built into the viewfinder itself. Today, we'll be exploring the use of these focusing assistance that's built into the viewfinder on some of these manual focus SLR cameras. To have a better understanding of what focusing aids we have available, we first will need to take a look through the viewfinder of this camera. When we take a look through the viewfinder of this camera, we see that there are a total of three focusing aids available to us. The center contains the split image range finder. Surrounding the split image range finder is the micro prism ring. The rest of the screen is known as the matte focusing screen. When you look through the viewfinder, you may notice that your camera has a different combination of focusing aids as compared to the one that I have in this camera right here. So simply use the correct technique to the correct focusing aids and you should be able to achieve properly focused pictures as well. Let us understand how to focus using the matte focusing screen. Here I will show you two examples. One picture is in focus and the second picture is out of focus. The picture that's in focus you can see will render sharply and clearly on the matte focusing screen while locations that are out of focus will just look very blurred out on the matte focusing screen. To focus with the matte focusing screen, simply turn the focusing ring until the location that you want to be in focus appears clearly and sharply on the matte focusing screen. Then just simply press the shutter release button on your camera to capture that image. The reason why this system works is due to the nature of the film SLR camera. Light enters the lens and it gets reflected up through the mirror up into the panda prism on your camera. When you take a look at the viewfinder, you are taking a look at the light that's entering the lens. Essentially, you're seeing exactly what the camera sees. When you press the shutter release button, the mirror will flip out and whatever image that you just saw through the viewfinder is now captured on the film that is present in the camera itself. Next, let us learn how to focus with a split image rangefinder. The split image rangefinder is this circular component located at the center of the screen. As you can see, since there's a horizontal line dividing the circle into two, my camera contains what is known as a horizontal split image rangefinder. In order to focus with a horizontal split image rangefinder, I need to ensure that my scene contains lines that are not completely parallel to the horizontal line. In this case, I'll be taking a picture of some of these windows located at this building over here. I now point my split image rangefinder towards the vertical line that's present on the windows. And you can see that since the picture is actually out of focus, the line that cuts through the split image rangefinder does not run smoothly. It's broken up by the split image rangefinder. As I turn the focusing ring to bring the windows into focus, you can start to see that the lines start to come closer together. Once you see that the line actually runs smoothly through the split image rangefinder and is no longer broken up, you know that the location that the split image rangefinder is pointing towards is actually in focus. You can now simply press the shutter release button to capture your image. Finally, let us learn how to focus with the micro prism ring present in your camera. The micro prism ring is this ring that's surrounding the split image rangefinder. When I point it towards a subject such as the bushes and the signs present in this park, I know that the picture is actually out of focus because there's a very strange sparkling pattern that's produced by the micro prism ring. In order to achieve focus, simply turn the focusing ring until you notice that the micro prism ring no longer displays this sparkling pattern in the subject that you're trying to focus on. Once I notice that the sparkling pattern has disappeared, I press the shutter release button to capture my image. And as you can see, the picture is actually appearing in focus. Keep in mind when focusing with these film cameras, depending on what aperture settings that you have chosen on the camera, you will see a different effect when you capture that image itself. This is because aperture settings or f-stop numbers that are selected on the camera will affect what is known as the depth of field of the image that you capture. In general, if you set the aperture to a larger number such as f16, what you will notice is a deeper depth of field, where more things from the foreground all the way to the background will start to appear in focus to the camera. If you select a smaller f-stop number such as f2 or f1.4, what you'll notice is that less objects will appear in focus. To get a better understanding of this depth of field effect, you can simply press the depth of field preview button present on many camera bodies or lenses. This causes the aperture blades to close and it will cause the depth of field preview effects to be shown on the viewfinder itself. 
you will see that more objects in general will appear in focus if you have chosen an f-stop number that is bigger than the smallest f-stop number available on your lens. In my example over here, I notice that when the lens is completely wide open, only the center portion of my picture now appears in focus. But when I press the depth of field preview button, I notice that as the lens closes down, more things start to appear in focus, such as the foreground and the sign that is located at the background. When I actually press the shutter button, you can actually see that the image that I captured does indeed match closely to what I saw through the viewfinder on that day. One final tip that I can give you with regards to focusing with these manual focus cameras is to use lenses that can actually open up to a larger aperture size or lenses that can achieve a smaller f-stop number such as f2 or f1.4. With a larger aperture size, the lens can actually allow more light to enter and it will give you a brighter viewfinder image so that you can focus better. This is why prime lenses are usually quite valued in the film photography industry because most of these prime lenses can actually open up to a larger aperture size, allowing for more light and allowing for a better focusing experience as compared to something such as this 35 to 70 mm f4 zoom lens. When you use zoom lenses, you may also notice a certain special effect that may occur when you mount the lens onto your camera. When you take a look through the viewfinder and your eye is not perfectly centered through the viewfinder, you can see that sometimes the split image rangefinder may contain one or both of its semicircles to be darkened, and the microprism ring will contain some black dots that will appear around its structure. When this occurs to resolve it, simply position your eyes to a different location until you notice that the dark patterns start to disappear completely from the focusing aids, and then you can proceed to focus as per normal. If however you own a lens that cannot open up to a large enough aperture size or one that has an aperture f-stop number that is of f5.6 and larger, you will notice that no matter what you do, the split image rangefinder and the microprism ring will tend to black out. As a result of this, you can only focus with the matte focusing screen since that component actually works with any lens in the camera's collection. If you do need to use these special lenses, what you can do is you can actually sometimes swap out the focusing screen that's present in your camera with a different focusing screen, for example one that contains just the matte focusing screen layer. This will remove the distracting darkening split image rangefinder present at the center of the standard focusing screen and it will give you a better focusing experience when using these specialty lenses. I do hope that this video will prove useful in your manual focusing journey using these SLR film cameras. So if you have any questions on how to use some of the focusing aids that have been taught so far, do feel free to drop a comment down below in the video and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice evening.